Eternal Word Television Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. is our church. This whole network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. Well, good evening. We have a great crowd here this evening. And we have a big crowd out there, so I want to say hi and welcome. I always look forward to Tuesday night because I don't have to worry about anything. You know, I just sit here and chit-chat. And if any of you have a question, you know, feel free to ask because it's just a family night. And all of you are more than welcome to call. Tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. I guess we do something different every Tuesday night, don't we? First, I'm going to advertise just what you heard advertised. So many of you have called and um, said, I went to music for Mass in the mornings. Well, that's almost impossible to do because we change the songs every morning. And we don't know which Mass you heard, see? But we can't give you each one. So what the sisters and I did was to make a Christmas mass, because I thought the hymns, all the hymns we're going to sing during the Christmas season, we made this called, it's called Messiah King. Messiah King. And I think it's great. Of course, that's not a very honest statement. Well, it's an honest statement, but it's not a kind of fair statement, because I'm supposed to think it's great. I'm in it. But my sisters do it. That's the thing that makes it great. So if you want a tape like this to hear the sisters singing, and so many of you have written, and I haven't been able to, to send you any music, here it is now, Call Messiah King. It's not free. <laughs> <laughs> Advent is a time of penance. Did you know that? Did anybody know that? You knew that. You knew it too? Wow. <laughs> anybody else know that? Wow, you're unique. It's a time of penance, and it's not like Lent. But if you know, we've been reading about John the Baptist. You know, repent, you sinner, you brood of vipers. Ooh, what a gentle man. Can you imagine getting up on a hill today and saying, you brood of vipers, they'd throw you out or put you in jail. And beside that, nobody listened to him. I wouldn't want to be called a brood of vipers. So his technique was different, but it was very effective because that's what the people needed. But Advent is a preparation, isn't it? It's a preparation for Christmas. Well, do you realize how much work goes on to preparing for Christmas? You gotta get a tree, then you gotta decorate it, and then most of the decorations from last year got dirty. Some of them broke. So you're running back and forth with new decorations, then you gotta buy presents for everybody, and then you're scratching your head wondering who you forgot, and then you got this big dinner, and you're wondering who's going to come. You know, is your son coming with his wife 
are the kids coming? Is your daughter coming with her husband? Are they going to stay where they are? Is, are they going to their mother-in-law's? Oh, God, you know what they, we're not coming home to you. Well, anyway, all of these things come in your mind. And there goes Christmas, see? And sometimes you're so exhausted, you have the slightest idea what just happened. So tonight we're going to look at, at Advent as a little bit of penance. I'm going to skip the worst stuff. <laughs> it's because I like you. See, I don't want you to feel bad. I'm going to give you some of the pretty bad stuff here. It isn't bad. It's just, ooh, tough. But it, it does, it's a prophecy for Christmas. Listen to what it says. Very exciting. Isaiah 1. It says, Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord speaks. Sons have I raised and reared, but they have disowned me. There's nobody knew Jesus had come. An ox knows its owner, and an ass its master's manger, but Israel does not know then my people would not understand. I think, you know, I think that our Lord could say that today, don't you think? In today's world, do, do we understand what it means for Jesus to come? The majestic, holy word of God to leap down to Mary's womb and become man. I don't know what the feminists are going to do about that one, but we won't worry about it, will we? Become men. See, that's a, an awesome gift from God, from the Father. And it says, oh, sinful nation, people laden with wickedness. Evil race, corrupt children. Oh, I know you don't like to hear that. Well, I think if we're real honest, we could say that about the whole world. See, I'm trying to make, I'm right in the worst, so that when the best comes, you appreciate it. It says here, the whole head is sick and the body and the heart is faint. From the sole of the foot to the head, there is no sound spot. Wound and welt, he's talking about Jesus now. Gaping gash, not drying, not bandaged, not eased with sap. Then he comes back to the city. And we got to read that as a nation and as a country, as a world. We got to know. It says here, we have become as Sodom and Gomorrah. It's getting worse, isn't it? Huh? No, it's not worse. I got more to come. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fats of fat legs. See, sometimes we think that if we give alms, it's enough. Or if we happen to visit a, an elderly person, it's enough. And all these things are very, very, very good. But the Lord wants a converted heart. He don't want your pocketbook. Angelica wants your pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> but God doesn't want your pocketbook. He wants your heart. He wants your mind. He wants you to be filled with him. He doesn't want all these kind of sacrifices that you just kind of drop in front of him and then go your way living a sinful life. He says, I don't find any pleasure in those things. He says, when you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Well... He said, your hands are full of blood and wash yourselves clean. Here's the nice part. Our Lord tells us all of our sins in here, and he tells us all our misdeeds, and he tells us all our iniquities. And then you know what he says? What he says, huh? He says, come now. Let us th set things right. 
Isn't that fantastic? Don't you think that's great? Huh? Come now. Let's set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they may become white as snow. See, isn't that a marvelous thing? Does it mean you can keep on doing what you're doing? No. But once we're repentant, see, God forgives and forgets. Do you find it hard to forget? Do you find it hard to forget? You do? Yeah. Who, who, who finds it easy to forget? Boy, we're in bad shape, aren't we? <laughs> Nobody finds it easy to forget. I don't either. Because you don't have spiritual amnesia because you're a Christian. You know, you, you remember things. You don't want to. They just kind of sneak up on you like a, a computer that's out of, that got a little, uh, one of these little, what do they call it, computers get when they go out of whack? Yeah, virus. Yeah, even computers have virus. <laughs> Sister Rayfield's had trouble with hers last week because she said, a, she was saying she thought it had the flu. <laughs> Though your sins be like scarlet, they may come white as snow. And though they be crimson reds, the worst, the worst kind of sins, they may become white as wool, white as snow and white as wool, meaning so pure, so pure. Imagine the difference between what we are and then you think what God wants you to be, and then you, for, you repent, and then all of a sudden, you're just totally changed. Beautiful. In Monday's lesson, this is my bravery. We say this every day, three, four times a day. And, and the Lord again, gives it to us. You know, he says, you're like an adulteress, a murderer, a prince of rebels, and a comrade of thieves. Woo. And then he says, in the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain. Come, he says. So he's saying, come. Come, let's talk this over. Come, let's climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob. See, there's that, there's that combination of a call to repentance, a call to conversion, and the result. The result. Tonight, I mean, you call, and you can call any time. I want you to do a couple of things. You can make a choice. I want you to say, I want to be repentant. I don't want your sins now. That's for your confessor. I want your dispositions. I want, to, I want to be healed and I want to repent of anger. I want to repent of selfishness. I want to repent of lust. I want to repent of of uh, uh, dishonesty. I want to repent of uncharitableness. I want to repent of being unkind. I want to repent. I just want you to repent tonight. Because we want to be clean when we look at that infant. Not a lot of people say the Lord's coming a second time. Sometimes the way things go, I wish I said, Lord, what are you waiting on? There's so much evil in the world. And I, 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 not that I want to destroy everything, but you just say, Lord, you know, how long will we be able to offend you so much, huh? That's really bad. And so tonight I want you to repent of something. But we're not going to get too many calls tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I also want you to thank God for something. Last week we did that, and some of you didn't have a chance to thank the Lord. 
I want you to ask God for something. Lord, I ask for your mercy tonight. Lord, I ask for your providence tonight. Lord, I ask for your understanding tonight. Lord, I ask for your kindness. And then you can do something else. You could say, Lord, I need to be gentle. Give me gentleness. Lord, I need to be charitable. I don't know how to love, Lord. I don't know how to be kind. Lord, I need to be honest. Lord, I need to listen when my family, my wife, my husband, my neighbor speaks to me. Lord, I need to slow down. I'm busy, 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 and I don't have time for you. Lord, I want to make time for you, and I want you to teach me how to make time. I want you to teach me the one thing necessary. We run, 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 and we're out of breath, and time is gone. You know, I was talking to a sister the other day, and I thought, this is almost Christmas already. It seemed like yesterday we just put the trees up and... And I used to think when you got an artificial tree, you had it made. Do you? <laughs> Forget it. Because when you get it out of the box, it's called <laughs> When you go to tra straighten out, the, the, the branches fall off. And now you've got a tree that looks like a twig. <laughs> you go and open the box, and some cat fell on top of the balls, and... So you run around for a brand new, smelly, good smelling tree. This is all the things we get involved in, and that's all wonderful. I'm all for trees and decorations, and, but not at the expense of a lack of repentance in my heart. A lack of real repentance. It says, Lord, I haven't given you an ounce of time. I haven't given you a minute. I haven't even been to Mass for, for weeks. So let's all kind of think tonight. Huh? Just kind of examine. This is, tonight's going to be examination of conscience. Lord, let me really see myself as I am. Let me see myself. This is that we just can't go on just all lovey dovey all the time. I got to read a look at me and say, where where am I going wrong? We have a call. Hello? Hello. Hello. Where are you from? I'm from Parsippan in New Jersey, mother. I am what This is my lucky day. I'm trying for two years. <laughs> That's wonderful. Praise the Lord. I'm, I have plenty of things to repent. I have a uh, family. Uh, three years ago, I lost a job, and we have poor Christmas gift-wise. But spiritually, it was good. And the kids were crying because there was not many uh, presents out of the Christmas tree. Since then, I have another baby who is going to be... Maria Nicole, December 6, one year old. This was blessing, better than anything that we could put under the tree that we buy it. Yeah. And our, my repentance will be to be nicer to my kids, yeah. and my husband, not to have such a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, be more obedient, like Mary was. And I need Martha in my house. Okay. And I love you dearly. Thank and you, I Jesus. want you to know I'm Croatian, and our heart is crying over there. But Why don't we say a prayer? Uh, Mother, uh, it's, I was saying so many times, oh, yeah, Lord has, Lord is in my life. He is first. Now I find out that maybe he is 70%. Now he's 100% because there's nothing we can do. We have all our family in Croatia. I think we need to pray for Croatia. You know, they're going, not going to have a very nice Christmas. So, Lord Jesus, I just ask that you look upon these people in Croatia and give them strength, courage, hope. 
increase our faith. Faith sometimes gets weaker under such dire, terrible circumstances. When you see nothing but cold murder and blasphemy and atrocities day after day. But you, O oh Lord, are so good and so great, so wonderful and so holy. You can give us courage and strength in the midst of, of everything. So I ask that you reach out and touch these people at an end. And let them understand how much you love them. It's so important, Lord, that we all know in the depths of our heart that you love me. We could get up in the morning, Lord, and say, he loves me. If we could think of it in the middle of the afternoon and say, he loves me. If I could go to bed at night and say, he loves me. And nothing else would matter that much anyway. I ask that you tell all the Croatian people tonight, down deep in their heart, I love you. I love you. I think if we did that, Lord, if you did that, we can. They would get courage to fight the good fight. Amen. We have another call. Hello? Hello. Where are you from? Massachusetts. And, and what is it that you wanted to tell us? I called to ask for uh, repentance for unforgiveness and also for a uh, change of heart. I, I'm one of those people that do the good things, you know, visit the sick and, and, and do other good things, but yet my heart is hard. So I call to ask for God's mercy and a change of heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that wonderful call. And you and I also want to pray for that. And I, I ask the Lord at this moment, whoever you are, to give you that deep repentance that comes from love. The repentance that says, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. The repentance that comes from an unforgiving heart. It's so, it's so hard sometimes to forgive. But see, if, if you remember this, see, this, oh, this old crucifix is getting worn out because I hug him so much. I just kind of hold on to him. I don't even know I'm doing it half the time. But, See, if I remember that, then we'll be able to forgive. You'll be able to forgive. Because he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. So we don't have a heart. You don't have a hard heart. Because if you did, you wouldn't have called tonight. See, we don't understand sometimes just what it means. Sometimes I think the worst thing is when somebody says, I'm sorry, and they don't forgive. Isn't that terrible? That's an awful cross. But if you've repented, you can always be sure that he says, if your sins be like scarlet, they shall be my white as snow. And that's what Jesus wants you, wants to give from you. We got to give Jesus a gift. You going to give Jesus a gift? Huh? Did you think of his gift? How many people are thinking of a gift for Jesus? You got Aunt Mary and Uncle Joe, and you got 25 grandchildren, and they got kids, and we got a little thing for everybody, and nobody gives a gift for Jesus. So what am I going to give Jesus? Your heart. An act of love. A forgiving spirit. The woman that just called, you have the most <coughs> wonderful gift to give to Jesus, the kind he's looking for and the kind he wants. Say, Lord, I repent and I forgive. Oh, that little baby's just going to glow like everything because you forgave. We have another call. Hello? 
Hello. Where are you from? Wheaton, Illinois. And what is it you wanted to say? Um, I want to say that I'm having a very hard time. I get angry at times <clears throat> because I've had cancer seven years ago. It came back after three years, and twice I almost died. <clears throat> and I feel God has been very good to me, so it's in remission right now. But at times I just get very upset. And so my children aren't going to church now, and it bothers me. And I, uh, I guess I constantly wonder, I know I keep hearing God loves me, but I see people that are very happy and they seem to have the peace that I yeah. keep hoping and looking for. And I don't know, I just, I just find it very difficult at times. Okay. We're going to pray for that. She is a woman that's thanking God for the cancer that's in remission and yet still gets angry at him, huh? You know, sweetheart, I know it's hard, but you see, you've got to look, first of all, that it's in remission, huh? And then you have to thank him for that pain. And I know it's lonely, and you would get tired of being sick on it. I'm always sick, you know, golly. I just take turns. First it's my asthma, and then it's my potassium goes down, and then my back's killing me. And we got all this kind of stuff, and you get tired sometimes. You really do. You just like to feel healthy for a change. And, and I think our Lord understands. I really do. But we still have to make that effort, and that's what we're going to ask our Lord. I think you were so humble to say that tonight. And I think your tears washed a lot away. You know, when Mary Magdalene went and she cried, she didn't say anything. She went up to Jesus and she cried over her sins, and she just wiped his feet with her hair. The Lord said, you must have been forgiven much, for you love much. So you just concentrate on loving him much. Everything else will go away. Oh, we have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Yes. I'm calling you from South Texas, and I want to thank you uh, for all the little, little angel coloring books we got from my nieces. Praise I God. just had open heart surgery. And I felt bad, and I wanted to repent because I don't pray as I should have, and just being a nominal Catholic, going to church on Sundays, and that was it. But uh, after that open-heart surgery, it really makes you stop and look at things another way, and I wanted to real quickly pray the divine praises. Sure. One thing is, I like to, instead of with the blessed be, we should say, blessed is God. All right. Blessed is his holy name, and blessed is Jesus Christ, true God, God and true man. Amen. Blessed is the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Blessed, blessed is his most sacred heart, heart, and blessed is his most, most precious, precious blood. blood. Blessed is Jesus in the most holy sacrament of our altars. Blessed is the Holy Spirit, our consoler. Blessed is the great mother of God, Mary most, most holy. holy. Blessed is her most holy and immaculate conception. Blessed is her glorious assumption. Blessed is the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed is St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and blessed is God and his angels and his saints and in all creation. Blessed is our God, our creator eternal, most loving Father. Amen. Thank you for this. Amen. I think, I think you got more than a new heart, don't you think? Huh? I think the Lord put in a new heart that's different, a new spiritual heart for you. You need to grab it and hold on to it and and continues to say how blessed is our God. And the greatest gift that God has given you, it seems, huh? for someone who been with a nominal Catholic, uh, the greatest gift was prayer. See, I can see and hear that that prayer came from your heart, your new heart. If that was it, 
that was worth the surgery. And sometimes my Lord has to kind of stop us, doesn't he, huh? Oh, we've just gone so fast. That happens to me all the time. I'm just gone, 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 gone. And all of a sudden the Lord flattens me out in bed like for a week or two weeks or I land in the hospital and there I am looking at four walls and I look up at the Lord and say, okay, I got the point. I got the point. That's because we are what we are. But I will pray for you that this new spirit, new heart you have will go on and grow in great love for God. We have another call. Hello? Yes. Good evening, Mother Angelica. Good evening. Where are you from? I'm calling you from South Louisiana, and I think I can identify with the caller who just spoke with you, the gentleman with the uh, heart surgery. My husband underwent this last December the 13th, and praise God, he's a new man totally. Sometimes I think we have to be knocked down before <laughs> we can realize what right. we have. But at this time of the year, so many of us feel so downhearted when we have separated uh, children or separated family from us. And we are spiritually separated from some of our children mm -hmm. who have chose to do this. We have tried, yeah. uh, you know, the prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, at times I feel angry and then yeah. I say, no, there's something that God's trying to tell me through this. But Mother, I do get weary. This is going on 13 years. Yeah. And I say, just please, if they would just darken the sill of our door and come to us. We have extended our hands out. And I said, what more can I do? And yeah. then I step mm -hmm. aside, and then I feel angry and lonely. And I was at the tabernacle this morning, and I put my hand on it, and I said, please, don't let us go to another Christmas holiday. With this, we need our children. We love them. They were born in cradle Catholics, raised in the Catholic schools. We've tried as much as we could as humans. I know it's in God's hands, but I need to be helped, Mother. Yeah, well, you know, this little passage I just read about our sins being like, becoming like snow and becoming white as wool. I know you feel angry and deserted by your children. You need to repent of that. I think that's what you're trying to say. But you see, because they have left and they're not coming back, sometimes we feel we have a right to be angry. And maybe we do. But you can't carry anger with you all the time. You have to release these children to the Lord. Not forget them. Not, not love them. You must love them and you must pray for them. But you can't carry, you can't carry that load. If I give you something, I can't take it back. And that's what we do with Jesus. We give him something, we take it back. We give it, we take it back. We give it, we, it's like a game. It's been a lot of years since they've gone. And there's nothing worse than a mother's heart. And you're disappointed. And this is the holiday season, and we kind of hope things will change. And sometimes the things that has to change is us. Not only do we need to repent our anger and our disappointment, but you can't allow anybody, even if it's your children, to have such power over you that they determine whether you feel good or not good, whether you're close to God or whether you're not close to God. That isn't what God wants. He really doesn't want that. You see, you've, you've brought them into the world, you raised them, and now you've got to leave them go. You pray for them, like Monica prayed 30 years for Augustine. Well, look what happened to him, huh? Pray for them and continue to love them. But let it go. Give that gift to Jesus. That's a big package with a big ribbon on it. It finally says, Lord, after all this time, I give this big box to you with all my children in it. I leave it to you. You know, if this season is, a, is not a holiday of hope, 
then we're going to be very sad indeed. So this is your gift. Raise your heart and know that he loves them more than you do, and he'll take care. And we have another call. Hello? Uh, hello, Mother. This is a call from New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like uh, perhaps maybe that we pray for some of our modernist priests, especially those in my parish who never have Christmas pageants or Christmas fairs, but they have holiday fairs and holiday pageants, and it seems like we don't know what Christmas is anymore. They never give us sermons where we have to uh, uh, perhaps maybe buy Christmas cards. Uh, we see so many of the uh, people sending out cards that say season's greetings. Uh, we were really even told at work that we should not say Merry Christmas to people. We're told that we should say Happy Holidays. <laughs> I believe that we should acknowledge everyone's holiday, but we should pray at least for our priests who should be telling Catholic people that Christ is the reason for the season. I think, I think you're right. I think it's unfortunate that we've gotten so pay. I went to a local store the other day I could not find one Christmas card that had Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on. Not one in the whole store. I looked and looked and looked. And she said, oh, we don't, I don't think we have any of those. Those? What are those? <coughs> See, we, no, there's no Christian. We have become, a, oh, there are a lot of good people in the world, a lot of holy people in the world, but I think we've gotten pagan, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's what we are. Bunch of pagans. You see, so many think that, that um, to love God is boring. I think that the way some of you live is hell. I really do. I think some of the way that you people live is hell. I knew a man one time who came to me and said his whole idea of a good time was to be in a smoke-filled bar getting drunk. And I thought, how sad. That was his whole idea of a good time. See, see we, we need to repent. I don't like the bugs you, but I'm going to. I'm going to because I don't think we've got lots of time. Oh, I don't think the second coming is coming. But as I, I look at the news and I read the newspaper and I hear and I get so many letters and so much misery, so much people are not being fed with the word of God. We got new age, new world, Mother Earth. Oh, God, we got paganism, idolatry. See, we have strayed, and sometimes I begin to wonder if this is what our Lord meant when he said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find any faith on the earth? See, we don't know, do we? But I think we need to be prepared. So we need all to repent tonight of everything, of our anger, of our frustration, of our anxiety, of our worry, 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 attitude and disposition, of all the things in us that are not like God. We need to repent. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Where are you from? Uh, Navarre, Ohio, near Canton. Oh, I remember Navarre, Ohio. Well... Uh, my mother-in-law tells me that her baby sister used to play with you when you were a little girl. Well, I wouldn't doubt it. A long time ago, we can't. Oh, don't remind me how long. My <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thank God that you're staying healthy and have such a wonderful program. Thank I've you, I've only Jim. been a Catholic now for about four years, and I'm working real hard at trying to do everything right and grasp everything. I, I'm calling for repentance against resentment. About six months ago, I joined Al-Anon, and it's been a, a tr 
to God send to me. My husband is a severe alcoholic, practicing alcoholic, and I'm having a lot of problems in letting go of past hurts and things that I know I've let them hurt me, but I'm having trouble getting rid of it. Yeah. And I, I keep asking God to please take this from me. And I think I need some help. Yeah. Well, resentment, regret, guilt, it's all in the memory, isn't it? That's what you're saying. You're saying, I remember, I remember, I remember. And all of this resides in the, in, in the memory. And our Lord gave us a remedy. One day he said, be compassionate as your father is compassionate and be merciful as your father is merciful. It is the father's will that you and I are merciful as he was merciful. It is the Father's will that we forgive as we have been forgiven. It is the Father's will that we accept the cross no matter how deep and bitter and awesome it is from His holy hand, His permitting hand. So whether He permits or ordains, it's like you're in the position you're in. It's, you're kind of stuck with it. But look upon it is that opportunity to be like Jesus. We need to repent of our resentments because they rob us of peace. And no one has the right to rob you of peace and joy. You have a right from God to be peaceful. And you can't allow the mistakes the sins, whatever, of anyone else to rob you of peace. Our Lord said something kind of clever one day. He said, when you go into a house, he said, say peace to this house. He said, if there's a man in there or a family who does not accept your peace, take it back. Well, how do you like that? In other words, don't lose it. And then he said, go to the middle of the village and shake the dust from your feet. What does that mean? You're going to go around and shake in your feet with dust? No. It means that there's the slightest memory that antagonizes you or causes you any kind of anxiety or frustration. Shake it off. Give it to the Lord. He's got big shoulders as a Christmas present, as a birthday present to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I don't have much to give you this year, but I want to give you the biggest and the best present I can manage. I give you all the resentment I have towards my husband. I give it to you, and I want peace in my mind and heart, peace for him and peace for myself. From the agony of pain, I ask for peace. That's a big gift. You don't need to go shopping this year. Put it all in a box and have it at the crib for Christmas. Mark past resentment. My gift to Jesus. You see, that's, that's what the Lord is saying here. I don't want your bullocks. I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your offerings. I want you. I said what Lord wants. He wants you. He wants me. There's another passage here. It's a beautiful brief. We have a breviary and we say it four times a day. And where is it? He says here. He says here. You will see the glory and the majesty of the Lord after the terror of the night. And that's what I ask the Lord for you, that he gives you the majesty and glory of the Lord after the terror 
of this long night that you have had, a night too long. Be at peace. The Lord loves you. In our monastery, we have a little custom. And um, we put an empty crib out. And then we have a little pan of straw, bag of straw. And when we do something for the Lord that's really hard, and we call it virtue, like we've heard tonight, huh? People who resentment, they don't want to be resentful. People are angry, they don't want to be angry anymore. People impatient, don't want to be impatient. So we've managed to eke out some kind of virtue. We go pick a straw and we put it in a crib. And I said to the sister, and I hope this crib is full of straw for Christmas Eve, you know? So I looked at it before I came down to see if it's pretty, it's getting there pretty full. Probably because they're living with me. You see, that's probably <laughs> most of the straws in there because they have to live with me. But that's a nice little custom for your family. See, every time your child takes out the garbage can, you can go and run in and put a straw. Every time your daughter helps you with the dishes, she can come run in and put a straw. Every time you're angry and you want to hit your husband with a, with a frying pan or vice versa, you know, you can put, put a straw in. You say, well, oh, that's a kind of childish custom. Well, I think it's better than what you're doing. You got something better, do it. We have another call. Hello? Yes, this is Ivory. Jolie Vare from Napoleonville. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mother Angelica, I enjoy uh, your program. Thank you. I listen to the program uh, every time I, uh, it's come on the air. I take all my time in listen to me. it's it's really uh it's really do me a lot of good did you have a question about forgiving though yeah but but this is a question about forgiving okay uh is it this is something in our in our community that uh, the priest we had that I I have been uh, I have been playing for the church for forty one years freely, and we have a new priest come in four years ago, and uh, he kicked me out. He kicked and you got out. So yes, he got someone that is uh, non-Catholic, to play that uh, uh, old jazzy stuff for Mass on Sunday. But my real Catholic way of playing for the Catholic Church, did I you, was kicked out. Did you play the organ? I played the organ, yes. Wonderful. And you're having a hard time forgiving. I made the solemn promise to the good Lord, if he let me live to reach the age of 62, I, to retire, I will play until my dying day. Do you have an organ at home? I, I have an organ at home, but I, wanted, I play for Mass on Sunday. Well, good. That's mine. But... Uh, it's hard for me to get that off my mind. I know it is. It's hard because but I dedicate my life playing for the honor and glory of God. And this priest came and high a non-Catholic man and paying him a salary. So I take it very hard. Yeah, well, I, 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 I can see that. I, I understand that. And I, I, I think logically there may is reason for you feeling bad. But you see, 
You can't always think logically or by reason alone. See, who were you praying for, huh? Were you praying for Father? Were you praying for the people? You are praying for God, weren't you? You know who he was praying for? For God? But you can pray for God at home. And you can pray all day if you want. See, don't forget who you were praying, playing for. You're playing for God. You don't have to be in a church to play for God. You don't have to be heard by a congregation to play for God. You play on Sundays and play with all your heart. But don't be resentful. If the priest has done wrong, he will have to answer for that to the good Lord. If he's been unkind or ungrateful or uncharitable, you have to pray for him. See, we can't always forgive unless we do good. Love your enemies, do good to them, pray for them. That's the, that's the, that's the counsel the Lord gave us. Huh? So you have to pray for Prophet. And you have to really go, go in the in the chapel sometime, or the church, or even in your in your living room, and 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 put this this resentment. That's what it is, really. Put this resentment in your hand and just raise it up to God, and say, Jesus, I want to give you this. I don't want to ever take it back. I've played. I'm retired now. I'm going to pray for you in my home as long as I want for Our Lady to hear and the angels to hear and all of heaven. You see, we can't always do what we used to do. And even though it seems very unjust to pay someone to do something that you're going to do for nothing, it doesn't even make sense, does it? But because it doesn't make sense and seems so unjust, that gives you an excuse not to forgive. And I know it's a burden on you. You don't seem to be the kind of person who wants to hang with that burden on. So give it to the Lord tonight. Will you, Lord, I just ask that he, he gets rid of this resentment and walks in the way of the Lord and has a peaceful heart. Don't allow anyone to take away your peace. Your peace lies in the Lord's. My joy I give to you, Jesus said, and no man can take it away. Well, something went wrong here now. I would like to recommend that as we really get close to Christmas, that we should keep Jesus in our mind. It is his birthday. Christmas Eve, the sisters and I sing happy birthday to Jesus. Same old happy birthday song that you, you know, say when some one of your loved ones is having a birthday. Happy birthday to you, that kind of thing. I think he enjoys that. Buy your gifts and get your turkey and decorate your tree. But do it for him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. The beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He came and lived among us, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Do we ever say, thank you, Father, for the greatest of all gifts, your own Son? Thank you, Jesus, for coming from such a height to such a depth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, through his shadow and power in the womb of a woman who said, Be it done to me according to thy will. By that woman, may we all be blessed this Christmas. And with this Advent begin a new life for us. That's the gift that Jesus wants, not our sacrifices and nothing that is exterior, although they're all good, almsgiving and visiting the sick and all of these things are wonderful and we should do them all, but not at the expense of saying to Jesus, I thank you for coming. 
happy birthday. My gift to you is a repentant heart. My gift to you is a gentle spirit. My gift to you is an unselfish mind. My gift to you is a listening heart. My gift to you, Lord, is a compassionate heart. My gift to you is sobriety. My gift to you is to go without drugs, alcohol, promiscuity, fornication, adultery. My gift to you, that you may make me as white as wool. I love you, Jesus, and I love you. And remember, in the morning, get up and say, He loves me. He really does. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Now.